Well, can you hear me now, Tom? Yes, the, uh, the sound seems fine this time, Matthew. Okay. Uh, sorry, everyone, for this uh, small uh, technical issue. Well, small or big, depends who, where you, you are. Um, well, let's start then. Um, well, I'm Mathieu Barral. I am SVP Sales here at Checkout.com. And I have a great pleasure to be with Tom Hay today, VP of Paytech at Curve. Um, today, the session will last around 30 minutes, so please... Uh, send some questions, give some inputs, and we'll be able to comment with Tom here. Uh, quick summary first of what Checkout is trying to do. Uh, is a few new series, live series about talking payments. Uh, we're going to welcome experts such as Tom uh, in the next few weeks and few months uh, to deep dive inside the payment ecosystem. So why payments matter to their business, how they're shaping the payment strategy, and how payments drives the mission and innovation. Uh, we'll be streaming live on LinkedIn, and you can ask questions anytime. Uh, Tom, do you want to introduce a bit about yourself, uh, you at Curve, your mission, your journey in the payment ecosystem? Sure. Um, well, for, for, for anyone who isn't yet using Curve, and I know there are a few of you out there, Curve is a digital wallet, and you could think of it as a, as a bit like Apple Pay or Google Pay, but it's got a lot more features. Um, and our proposition is to be one card to rule them all. So one of the big differentiators against, say, Apple Pay is, is that we have a Curve uh, MasterCard, which fronts a digital wallet. So you can use it in ATMs or, or point of sale terminals as, as well as just digitally. Um, we've got a host of other features as well. So one of our, I think, really interesting uh, features is something called go back in time. Uh, so if, if you have done a transaction and you've sent it to, um, I don't know, your, your uh, personal card and you actually wanted to send it to your business card, you can go into the app, you can use go back in time and we will um, refund onto one card and change the debit onto another card. And that can be useful in all sorts of circumstances. For example, if you bought something on your debit card and then at the end of the month you find yourself a bit strapped for cash, you can move that purchase off onto your credit card and give yourself a bit more headroom. So that, that's part of what Curve does today. Um, but today's picture, today, what we have today is only really part of the long-term vision, which is to be um, the dashboard for all of your money or um, over-the-top banking, as, as we sometimes call it. So the, the idea is to give you full control over your money wherever it may be and to allow you to see, spend, send, and save that money. Um, one, one of the things that we uh, have added quite recently, we've, uh, we've had a reward points program for the longest time, which allows you to earn money when you make purchases, but it was limited to uh, six retailers, which you chose. But we've now integrated with um, a partner called Cardlytics, and we're offering our more than 1 million UK customers uh, merchant offers from over 100 recognized brands like Eurocar, Harvey Nicks, and, and pret a manger is a real range of, uh, of different merchants. And so those merchant offers come up in your app. You can choose which ones you want. And the uh, offers are tailored to your particular um, spending patterns, et cetera. So they're, they're uh, tailored to you. So that's really exciting and another a big driver for using Curve. Great. Uh, well, I know really well Curve and I know that uh... It's growing really massively. So I think it was more, well, the secondary question maybe we should have asked the first is, how did you get into payment? You know, it's a, it's a maybe not too niche industry now. Everyone talks about it, but probably five, 10 years ago, no one knew about it. It was probably quite boring. Now many companies are around it and try to create innovation for the consumer. So how do you get into it? Um, well, it's, it's quite a convoluted story, and it starts a long, long time ago. So um, I graduated in psychology, but I clearly was not cut out to <laughs> do psychology. So I decided that um, uh, IT was a, a much better field to move into. So I, I became a general software developer. And it just so happened that um, as a, a, a side activity, 
I helped a friend of mine who was a, a composer to uh, do a, a sort of visual display of a fractal pattern. We are going to get to payments, bear with me. <laughs> so um, yeah, we displayed this fractal pattern in the, in the concert. He, he was wowed, told all his friends about it. One of his friends happened to be starting up a company to uh, write um, software for ATMs, which is a really, really niche part of payments. Yeah. Anyway, um, I ended up that I, I, I got a job there. So I was writing software for the, the these ATM, these NCR ATMs, and I got to travel all over the the Arabian Gulf installing these systems. Um, from there, um, we developed a controller to connect the ATMs to a host system, and um, it grew grew up from there. So I've been in payments for more than 30 years. Um, I've started and grown and sold my own company, uh, traveled all over the world, and enjoyed every minute of it. Well, almost every yeah. minute of it. <laughs> there have been yeah, some well, moments <laughs> which have been yeah, less there's than always a problem. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, interesting. Well, I and we spoke many times and yeah, you, you your knowledge and payment is quite incredible. So um it was it was super important, especially at the switch between checkout uh, and curve, uh where everything happened in two, three days, uh, to have that knowledge and knowing that you know things are difficult. Um but Maybe let's go back to Curve and payments. Uh, you're developing many functionalities at the moment. What's the most exciting one now uh, that is happening with Curve um, across the, you know, I know you have the US, UK, and they have different functionalities, but what is the most exciting one for now? Wow, the, there, are, there are so many things going on at Curve uh, at the moment. I, uh, you I have guess to one... pick one, Tom. You have to pick one. <laughs> pick one, darling. <Dalit. laughs> okay. Um, then I guess I, I have to pick uh, Curve Credit. So we've, uh, we have we issue a debit card, um, but we believe that there is a, a need for customers to be able to access um, credit when they need it, but on a much more controlled way than... Uh, a normal credit card. So what we have, what, what we're in the process of launching is uh, something called buy now, pay later. So imagine you make a purchase, any purchase in any merchant, and then at some time after that purchase, whether it be an hour, a day, a week, or a month, you can say, wait a minute, um, that was quite expensive. I, I don't want to pay this all at once. I want to pay it in installments. So you can uh, choose that transaction in the app and you can say I want to put this one onto under installment credit and you'll choose the installment plan that you want to use and you will then be able to repay that purchase in three or maybe up to 12 uh, monthly payments depending on the size of the purchase and you can do that with multiple purchases up to the affordability limit that we have uh, we have determined for you. So we think, we know from uh, customer research that there is a massive demand for this. We think it's a better proposition than, uh, say, Klarna, which is the market leader at the, at the moment. Um, so we, we, we see that as being a massive, uh, massive benefit for our customers and another growth driver for Curve. Interesting. So the transaction happens, so you can pick whatever after basically the checkout moment. You say at the end of the month, I might not make it, um, and therefore you're able to to credit for that specific transaction. That That's correct. You choose the transactions that you want to put on to installment credit, and, and you can make that choice uh, sometime after the you've actually made the transaction. So if you if you kind of, um, yeah, splash out on, on, on something big, and then, as you say, towards the end of the month, you go, oh, actually, <laughs> I'm a bit tight, <laughs> and uh, you, you can be on to three or six monthly installments instead. Cool. Very, very interesting. It's a, lo a lot of uh, things happening in the credit and buy now, pay later uh, world at the moment. Um, yeah. what, what's ex with all those fintechs and things happening exciting in the UK and Europe, uh, You've been in payments and in the fintech world for more than thirty years. Why so much activity? Why suddenly payment is, you know, darling of investors and uh, neo banks are what the users want to use? Why suddenly in the past five years? Well, w within within Curve, we looked at it as um, 
what, what's happening to the financial industry is what has already happened in several other industries, such as the music industry. So it's a cycle of uh, unbundling and rebundling. So if, if you think about what's happened in music, uh, once upon a time, there were just three big record labels, you know, Universal, Sony and, and Warner, and they, they monopolized the industry. Um, then along came the indie labels, and that kind of broke up their, their monopoly. So that was um, unbundling of services. So you could now uh, access you know, smaller artists and much more choice. Um, but it was perhaps inconvenient to have to go to all the different record labels to find the artists that you wanted. So the industry rebundled via uh, iTunes and Spotify. And we uh, we sometimes say Curve wants to be the Spotify of the finance industry. So we're not trying to become a new bank. We're not asking you to change your bank account. What we're doing is becoming or becoming one place where you can uh, choose from all the different financial service providers that are available. So you choose um, your portfolio of, of financial service providers in much the same way that, you know, once upon a time you had to buy an album with, with a set of tracks on it that had been chosen by uh, the record company, but now you can build your own playlist. Well, exactly the same with finances. Instead of going to your bank who offer you current account, savings account, mortgage, loan, et cetera, et cetera, but they're all sourced by them, you can pick and choose where, you know, where, wherever is, uh, is best for your specific um, needs. So I, I think... It, An it, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's a, an aggregator of different services out there. Yeah. Um, but as you say, the, the, this, this sea change, which is happening in the industry, and, and even um, um, J, Jamie Diamond of, of JP Morgan has said that you know, fintechs are a major competitive threat. And, and if the, you know, the chair of the biggest bank in the world says that, then it, 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 it's for real. So it's, it's a very, very hot area. Um, and, and I have to put in a plug uh, here. Um, Curve, uh, three years ago, uh, two years ago, did uh, a crowdfunding round. It was one of the most successful and quickly adopted crowdfunding rounds in the history of, of FinTech at the time. Um, I remember I, I, I just joined the company. We were watching the investment thermometer go rocketing upwards. We go, oh, my goodness. Is that, are these figures right? And it, it, it was amazing. <laughs> well, we're doing well, it again. Um, I've heard that. I've saw that. Yeah. <laughs> so get over to the, to the Curve website. Uh, if you're interested in having a slice of Curve, register your interest now. And uh, when the crowdfunding happens, we'll get in touch with you and, and it's your chance to uh, um, own shares in Curve. Hopefully you beat your previous record. That's the, that's that, the way to do it. That's the way, that's <laughs> what we're hoping for, Matthew, certainly. <laughs> um, and in, in the last payments, uh, in the last 12 months, sorry, uh, yet have you had a good, any good learnings regarding to your payment processes, improvement in customer experience? Um, and uh, for example, you switch over to us, uh, you've developed many, many different features. And it, it's a question is, you know, are, you know, I use other banks, I won't name them, big banks have been here for many years. Um, they provide one feature, you know, and others provide a, a feature every month. Um, what's your thoughts on those and how you manage to to, use, uh, to convince the customer? Well, I, I, I guess we ought to do the mutual backslapping first. So, yes, 12, uh, nearly, nearly 12 months ago, we, we uh, um, changed from um, Wirecard, who had, who had just been shut down by the FCA, over to Checkout. Um, it, it, it was really a, a very positive move for us. Um, this, the service that we've had from from checkout has been fantastic. Um, but one of the key things for us is that um, our decline rate has uh, it, it, it's been cut drastically. So that's much better for our customers. That they they get less unnecessary declines. So that has certainly been a, a big improvement that's happened over the over the last twelve months. Um, to some extent, that was a, a sort of unanticipated uh, benefit of, of, of moving to checkout. But um, more, some of the more planned changes that we've made to the payment processing 
some fairly mundane things, but that make a big difference to our customers. So we've, we've improved, improved our refund matching with a, with a normal card. If you get a refund, you've got a refund. But with Curve, if you get a refund on the Curve card, we have to decide which of your uh, cards in your wallet that refund needs to yeah. go to. So we've, we've put some big improvements into that uh, process to make sure that we match more accurately more often. Uh, what else have we done? We've added something called the anti-embarrassment mode. So if you go into a shop or, or, or online and you, you try and pay not sufficient funds, oh, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> so we've put in automatic fallback to a secondary funding mechanism so you can specify that but, you know, if, if, if I've got not sufficient funds here, we'll take, take the funds from elsewhere. Um, what else? We, we, we've made some internal processing changes. There were certain circumstances where a customer, if, if, if um, a transaction failed, their funds could get tied up for a couple of days while the refund went through. So we've made it some internal changes to eliminate that delay. If something goes wrong with the transaction, the funds are made available to the customer immediately again. Um, and we've also made a, a change to reduce the number of declines due to slow networks. Sometimes uh, as as we have just seen today, uh, the internet or networks can yeah. slow down for no apparent reason. And when yeah. that happens, uh, we don't want our customers to be getting declines because the messages aren't flowing quickly enough. So we've put in some uh, um, some features to prevent that from happening. Cool. Um, and in terms of features, and every, uh, you you have a, I'm sure you're very very data driven. Uh, at Curve, and where I think it's key uh, to be able to improve. W what is the key metrics that you I use? You yourself wake up every day. You're like, I need to check them uh, to make sure first our systems are working. Uh, we're not talking about marketing met, uh, data, but I think we're talking about your data, pure payment. Why are you looking for fraud ratio, refund ratio, acceptance rate, etc.? Yeah, you, you, you're right. We make uh, we make heavy use of data at Curve for all sorts of, of purposes. Um, so sure, sure enough, on the operational side, as, as well as just checking that the system is up and the latency is good and the decline rate is where it ought to be and, and so on and so forth, um, we also have some more sophisticated metrics. So we, we have um, uh, a, a machine learning fraud detection engine, which, which, we, uh, which we've developed in-house. And I guess that's not so unusual nowadays. A number of companies have got that. But we've also developed a, a, an ML-based churn prediction model. So if a customer behave, um, has a certain pattern of behavior, we can see certain patterns that characterize someone who is going to stop using their curve card. Um, and so when we see that happening, we can ping them a little reminder, hey, you haven't used Curve for a little while. Uh, find out you know, maybe if, uh, if, if something has not worked well for them. And we can uh, win them back as a, as, a, as a regularly transacting customer. And so using data for that is, is, uh, is really important. On the tactical side, we use um, experiments. So uh, sort of A-B testing to find out which version of a feature our customers are attracted to, or indeed, if, if they want that feature at all, if, if it gets no take up, then, hey, let's go <laughs> do something else. Yeah. Um, and then there's the st more strategic stuff where we use the data to, to understand the profile of our customers and, and typical usage patterns. And that way we know uh, which market segments are going to be more attracted by by Curve and also which geographies we might uh, move into uh, where customers are going to be uh, attracted to Curve and benefit from it. Cool. Interesting. And in terms of, um, you know, you, you probably understand very well the different issuers and issuing banks. Uh, do you see different patterns with them, some behaving better? Uh, first on the fraud side, but at the same time, and the acceptance. Do you go speak to them? Uh, reach out to them. Uh, we at Checkout know, and we partner with, with with Curve also to try. But you're like, oh, I don't know. I'll take Barclays at 98, but NatWest is at 94, vice versa. Do you speak with the issuing banks? We we uh, we speak with issuing banks when we see um, particular issues. Um, so uh, over over the past um, 
past six months that there have been some issues popping up to do with um, 3D Secure and SCA um, because particularly of, of, of Curve's processing model, um, some banks are saying, oh, you need to put your transactions through strong customer authentication. We're going, no, 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 we're, we're card on file, merchant initiated, we're outside the scope of, of PSD2 SCA. So in some of those cases, we've had to have direct dialogues with the issuers to explain what the situation is. And, and, and once we explained it to them, they've come around, they said, oh, yeah, now we get it, we, you are compliant, that's fine. Um, in other cases, though, we, we, um, we, we've we come to uh, check out as our partner and said, look, you know, can you help us out with these particular banks? And um, I know you guys have done some steering of traffic to different 3DS versions, depending on the performance yeah. of the of the issue of banks. And, and it's, that's yeah. it's been complicated. Uh, SCA and 3DS1, 3DS2, I think, uh, it's been a topic, a topic for three or four years now already, and many issuers are not very ready, uh, or some don't respond really well. So yeah, it's it's a uh, the UK is quite good. I think it's one of the best country in in Europe in terms of uh, acceptance rate, which is key because you know payments you want as less friction as possible, but at the same time security. Um, I think um, that's a key element. Uh, then I think let's move on to a bit partnerships. Um, you've said that now you have more than a hundred, uh, you know, retailers uh, where the curve user can have a discount or etc. Whatever they want, and I think this is a key feature in the future for many that will differentiate companies like yours and fintechs compared to the old banks that don't know where you are. Um, what is the importance of that? You really see a lot of traction uh, and many discounts and uh, companies coming to you more and more. Sure, um, we we have a, a quite an attractive uh, customer demographic in Curve. Uh, our, our customers tend to be um, towards a high, higher higher end of the uh, high value customers. They tend to be quite tech savvy and and also quite switched on financially. So it's it's a very um, attractive market for the merchants. So they are keen to uh, push offers. Through Curve, and therefore we, we we get a lot of very good offers coming in through the through the merchants. Um, but in in wider terms, I, I guess partnerships are pretty important to Curve uh, because the payments value chain, as as you know, is is pretty complicated, and there are some parts of that value chain where either very niche um, skills and knowledge are required or some parts where it, it's really only cost effective to run at a large scale. So in, in those kind of cases, it makes sense for us to work with a partner rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and uh, build and run stuff ourselves. Um, by doing that, we, we can concentrate on um, focusing our, our offering uh, one of one of our principles is to obsess about the customer so keeping our focus on the customer rather than having to look at all, you know, just keeping the lights on and the the engine running yeah all right payments and the back end front end is very complicated so always uh it's a it's a very different business well in terms of as you say you've been many years in payments uh if you were to pick partnerships with different acquirers, PSPs, getaways, what are the, how do you decide? I, I, I know we've done an RFP. I know your questions. Uh, some features are not the same for retailer than for FinTech, obviously, but how do you decide? To, 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 be, to be perfectly honest with you, Matthew, when I joined Curve, it, it was a bit of a, um, an unstructured process, let, let, let's put it that way. So we had <laughs> different people going off and talking to different organizations or sometimes different people talking to the same organization and somehow um, a consensus would emerge and, and that's that that was uh, that was how we chose. But we, we've become much more structured now. Um, and as you say, you, you've, um, you've been through one of the RFPs. So functionality, obviously very important um technology or te uh, technical compatibility also very important but 
I think the the really key thing for us is to find a company or find companies that have a similar strategy and a similar culture to Curve, because we are very fast moving. We you know we we, we tend to be um, more open to to take risks to gain market share, etc. So we need hungry. a partner. Hungry, hungry is the word. Yes. So we need a partner who understands that and who is able to come with us on that journey and and support us rather than being a blocker and say, oh well, we can probably do that in three months' time. We've got a new release coming out. So no, oh, we need it next week. Um, so um, yeah, cho choosing uh, choosing these compatible partners is uh, is really important. And um, yeah, check check out to certainly tick that box. I, I think you've been rated as one of Europe's top unicorns. So you're on a, a very kind of similar trajectory to Curve. So good compatibility there. Yeah, well, we like working in, in, in payments innovation. I think it's uh, there's so much out there that uh, legacy tech and leg I will say le legacy provider will have much. It's hard to catch up. We all know it's difficult to push new products. So imagine if legacy code happens. Uh, and it goes a bit to one of my last questions is very thoughts on payment innovation. If today you can, you could build anything, you know, it's just magic one in your life. What payment innovation you think will be there? Uh, it's a tricky question. Five years, I won't say three years or some, I, or 10 years, you know, just think the future. Um, <laughs> yeah. What would you think? I, I think there's, um, there's a lot more to be done in terms of open banking. Um, We've made a start with we UK and Europe have, have made a start on open banking, but I, I think the first generation of, of um, apps that use open banking are fairly bread and butter. So it is personal finance management. Um, but I think there's a lot more mileage in that. One, one of the um, innovations that or changes that, that um, we've been pushing for and, and which the open banking implementation, OBIE, um, has now published the standards for is something called variable recurring payments. Um, today, yeah. if you make a payment through open banking, the customer has to strongly customer authenticate e each payment uh, as it's made, which is kind of no good in the curve model because you're using your curve card. You don't want to have to stop and then authenticate yourself to, to your bank. Uh, so the ability to set up something which is much more like a, a card on file mandate or a direct debit mandate, whereby um, the customer gives permission and says, yes, uh, Curve, I will let you make payments from my account on my behalf um, at irregular intervals for irregular amounts within these parameters. Um, and I think that is is really going to um, be transformative. I, I um the car, I think the card networks have seen this coming, which is why they've become increasingly interested in um, non-card networks. So uh, MasterCard bought out yeah. um, Vocalink some years ago, and Visa, of course, have been pushing Visa Direct, etc. So I think they can see that that uh, this is going to become a real threat to them over the next few years, and they're trying to get trying to get in on the ground floor and make sure they're part of it rather than squeezed out by it. Yeah, it's always been, uh, it's always the, the, the key element of open banking. Uh, I, I've personally been very uh, bullish on it, uh, but the issue was to do the repayment. So companies like yours or, you know, Uber or, you know, wherever you go online, you shop and every time you have to do five, six, seven steps to do a payment, it's not frictionless. Uh, your yeah. card, you, you use Apple Pay, Google Pay, you do it in 10 seconds, if like three seconds, if that, this is frictionless and like here there's probably payment experts but the user consumer doesn't care about the interchange and the scheme fees or the fees that uh, the merchant pays they just want to pay the easiest way and it's not about being cheaper it's just the easiest way so that's why i think open banking have has huge potential but at the same time needs to solve the user experience element uh, on that side um so my uh, last question what's next for curve i know you have big plans all around the world yeah. Um, so tell us a bit more about it. So um, I, I guess a couple of things. One, uh, one is 
and geographical expansion. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that we are planning to launch in the US um, later this year. So we, we, we think that's going to be a fantastic market for Curve. Um, the average uh, American consumer holds seven different cards in their wallet. So getting all of those into one place uh, is going to be a big benefit. And also uh, American consumers, many of them are very uh, rewards focused, re rewards point chasers. Um, and so our new rewards program is, is also going to be attractive. But we, we, we know that the States is a different market from UK and Europe. And so we've hired a team of, of payment experts in the US who are bringing that local knowledge to us. So when Curve launches in the US, it will be a similar product to UK and Europe, but it, it will be tailored to the US market. Um, and I, I see there's a, a question came up on the chat um, about, uh, I think the question was specifically about Africa. Um, in, in the fullness of time, we, we yes, we would love Curve to be a global offering. Uh, we are restricted by regulations as to which countries we can issue cards and we have to get permission to do that. Um, so we're, we're, we are moving uh, to expand our, our reach across uh, across the globe. Um, so yeah, that, that's I, I think that's probably the, the the most exciting thing that's happening. Uh, but strategically, we are continuing to move towards that dashboard for your money concept. And so as well as card payments, we're integrating into non-card payment networks. So um, you should be able to do uh, cash disbursements, direct to bank accounts from your Curve app and potentially um, send them and receive direct debits as well. So there's a, a, a lot more, uh, a, a lot more gas in the tank at Curve. There'll be lots more to see over the coming years. So much to do. So much to do. Uh, yes. Great. Well, um, yeah. Um, well, perfect. Thanks. Um, I think that was the last question. Uh, thanks for coming on, uh, Tom. Uh, hopefully your crowdfunding in the next few months uh, will be very busy in the US launch um, for for Curve. And yeah, thanks a lot for attending. Thanks, Matthew. It's been great talking to you. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye.